The inspiration for this year's uh, presentation came in a song sung by Kim Walker Smith and performed earlier in this service by Life Praise. The King is here. Until this year, we began our focus, when we began our focus on royalty, I not, had not noticed how many songs focused on this truth. As I wrote our uh, weekly bulletins leading up to Christmas, I became aware of several wonderful old Christmas carols that exalt Jesus as the King. Anybody ever hear this one, Joy to the World? Well, you're going to get to help me give this part of the presentation. I think we could stand as we sing. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Give yourself a hand. That was great. <laughs> and you can be seated. <laughs> Another part of that song says, Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy. He talked about heaven and earth proclaiming this truth of the Savior who reigns. Now, see, we, we usually learn one or two verses, but there's a ton of verses in the, I mean, these are old songs, you know. No more let sins and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow, far as the curse is found. Far as the curse is found. You know that one by heart? <laughs> Probably not. But what truth there is in that, that the good news of what Jesus came to do has spread abroad and declared the message that Jesus Christ is King. He rules the world. You probably know this verse. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love. Amen. The celebration of Christ's birth is more than observance of a baby born in a manger many centuries ago. The coming of Jesus was the fulfillment of countless prophecies of Scripture. The promised Savior of the world, the mighty God, wrapped up in flesh, the King of glory. He was visiting royalty, born in a humble stable, a uh, heavenly majest majesty veiled in obscurity, and divine destiny delivered in humanity. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The humble surroundings of his nativity belied the significance of his arrival. Few were aware of his birth. The family was displaced. They were required to travel to the place of their family lineage to register for taxation. It was the worst time for travel, but the appointed time for Christ's arrival. Little did they know the grand scale of prophecy that positioned them at the right place, at the right time, for Messiah to come just as predicted. Amen. The son of David was born at the birthplace of David, an important center of the tribe of Judah in Israel. The prophet Micah had declared, But you, Bethlehem, out of you shall come forth to me, the one to be ruler in Israel. In an unlikely place, the King of glory came to become the Savior of the world. So we sing joy to the world. The Lord has come. Let earth receive her King. Amen. And then I came to the first Noel. And I wasn't sure I knew what Noel meant, so I looked it up. <laughs> we sing songs in, all the time that we don't know what they mean. So it's good to... 
You know, take a look at them. If it's a proclamation of good news from long ago. Jesus is here. The king has come. Noel became the synonym for Christmas in very early times. They don't really know the, the first, the beginning of, of, this, of this song, but in the Middle Ages, there were English and French songs of Christmas that used the word Noel. The French expression, Joyeux Noel. How's my French? I don't know. <laughs> I said that in the right way. Uh, means Merry Christmas. The first known publication of the English carol, the first Noel, was in a book titled Carols Ancient and Modern, edited by William Sandys in 1823, before all of you were born. Webster's Dictionary from 1828 defines Noel as a shout of joy or a Christmas song. So there is a joyous expression when we come to the season of Christmas. This one, I don't know if I should have you stand and sing this one or not. The first Noel the angels did say, yeah, you could do it, was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay, in fields where they lay keeping their sheep. On a cold winter's night that was so deep. Noel, 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 Noel. Born is the King of Israel. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Born is the king. <laughs> Other verses said, They looked up and saw a star shining in the east beyond them far. And to the earth it gave great light. And so it continued both day and night. Noel, born, is the king of Israel. And by night of that same star, Three wise men came from country far. To seek for a king was their intent, and to follow the star wherever it went. Noel, Noel, born is the king of Israel. The star drew nigh to the northwest, or Bethlehem, it took its rest. And there it did both pause and stay, right o'er the place where Jesus lay. Noel, Noel, born is the king of of Israel. Praise God. Then entered in those wise men three, fall reverently upon their knee, and offered there in his presence their gold and myrrh and frankincense. Noel, Noel, born is the king of Israel. Praise God. And it stops. I guess I'm through. No, I'm not through. <laughs> It'll get there. He was born in obscurity, but he reigns in majesty. There is optimistic triumph in the declaration of his birth of this child of destiny. The recognition of his authority preceded his arrival. Even from antiquity, a blessing was pronounced to the tribe of Judah. It said, the scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from his descendants, until the one who comes who it belongs. Are we not able to switch to this? It wasn't able, it wasn't working. Guess not. So you can't see. You just have to hear and imagine it. It's like old time radio. Yeah, that's the way it was. The scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from his descendants until the coming of the one to whom it belongs, the one whom all nations will honor. That was the ancient prophecy. Now, in governments with ruling monarchs, the transfer of authority is passed on from the first to the firstborn of the next generation. They're called a crown prince or crown princess. It's a designation of royal appointment. 
as the heir apparent, he or she will be the next ruler to assume royalty or assume authority of a, of a country as their king or queen. Now, we don't have that. Uh, some, some seem to think that we do. But we don't have a king. Uh, we, I'll try to stay off of politics. But uh, the fact is that there are other countries that do, and they, they have this succession of, uh, of authority. But Jesus was born as the son of David, and he was destined to sit upon the throne of Israel. However, there had been no descendant of David ruling in Israel since the captivity of Judah, almost 600 years before his birth. They had gone into captivity. No wonder there were those that eagerly waited the arrival of such a royal leader that would overthrow the Roman oppression and restore authority to the nation of Israel. As a progeny of royalty, Jesus could have established such a kingdom and restored the independence of a nation. But that's what the authorities were afraid of. And when they saw the crowds gather around Jesus, they were so alarmed that he might overthrow the government. But he didn't come for that reason. His royalty transcended the bloodline. He was not only the son of David, he was the son of God. His purpose was not to establish the kingdom of God or the kingdom in, in man, but the kingdom of God in the hearts of man. There were those that came to him and said, Lord, will you at this time restore your kingdom to Israel? And he said, he said, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons that the Father has put in his own power. And so he avoided the question. It was a nice political answer, but they weren't, that was not his purpose. He had not come for that purpose, but to establish a spiritual kingdom in the hearts of men. When we celebrate the coming of the king, we're not dreaming of another political party or the restoration of a Jewish monarchy. We are celebrating the birth of the Savior of the world and the anticipation of a future kingdom that will bring righteousness and peace to a world of chaos and crime. To us, to us, the message of Christmas is a message of hope, a future of faith. The king was born and he lives and reigns in our hearts until the day when he will reign as king of kings and Lord of lords. Praise God. The king was born and he lives and reigns in our hearts today. Amen. Where is the king? There are those that came seeking the king. Somebody wrote the song, We Three Kings of Orient Are. I had to look up the words to this one because the way I best remembered it was a derivation of the Christmas song. We three kings of Orient Are, smoking on a rubber cigar. It was loaded and exploded. We three kings of Orient were. I don't know where I learned that, but why did that stick and the real one didn't? <laughs> this is one of the most intriguing aspects. That these, these wise men, where there was three or a dozen, we don't really know, but there was three different gifts names, so that's why we assume that there were three, and later in tradition, they're identified as kings of the east, and they were named Caspar, Melchior, and Balthazar. Yes, how many named their kids Balthazar? If that's your name, I'm sorry. All right. The assumption is that there were three because of the, the three gifts, the uh, frankincense, gold, and myrrh that was, that was named here. But these wise men from the east came seeking a king from a very distant place. We Three Kings, it was, this was written in 1857. Yeah, they've been around a while. We Three Kings of Orient are bearing gifts we traverse, traverse, traverse. Some of you drive one of those. Afar, field and fountain, moor and mountain, following young, yonder star. Born a king on Bethlehem's plain, gold I bring to crown him again. King forever, ceasing never over us all to reign. Frankincense to offer have I, incense owns a deity nigh, praying and praising, all men raising, worship him, 
God Most High. Myrrh is mine, its bitter perfume, breathes of life in gathering gloom, sorrow, sighing, bleeding, dying, sealed in the stone-cold tomb. Glorious now, behold him arise, King and God and sacrifice. Alleluia, alleluia, earth to heaven replies. O oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Praise God. Well, and then we came down to the, the final week, and we have one more song before... We have the praise team come back, if I can get down to it. The tragedy is that there were so many who were in walking distance of the birthplace of Messiah, and had they desired to investigate the claims of the scholars, these wise men that came, all they had to do was take the six-mile trip from Jerusalem to see for themselves. In a matter of three hours, they could have easily arrived in Bethlehem. They could have come to see for themselves if this was true that a king had been born in Bethlehem. But the scribes could find the scripture, but they never sought the place of a savior. While wise men came from great distance and easily found the object of their search, they bowed before him and presented their gifts. What are you seeking this season? A sail or salvation? A peaceful portrait of the nativity or an introduction of the king? Are you hoping to receive a coveted gift or seeking to give to someone else? The king of Christmas is still waiting your search and will be easily found by those who seek him. Praise God. Let's seek after him this Christmas season. Hark, the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king. There was joyous expression when the angels appeared to the shepherds and proclaimed Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Charles Wesley, he was the brother of John Wesley, who's recognized as the beginning of the Methodist church. He authored over 6,000 hymns during his life, and he penned the words to the ancient carol, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, Glory to the newborn king almost 300 years ago. He acknowledged the fact that the child born in Bethlehem was also the king of glory. I like how, how these Christmas carols are so theological. <laughs> of course, that would appeal to me, you know. But they're packed full of truth and packed full of such, such powerful phrases, and we usually just, you know, get the easy ones and, and move on. So that's why you're enduring, I mean, enjoying this today, <laughs> to hear what the, all the other words are. Let's sing that song. Hark the herald angels sing. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth and mercy mild. God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. The next verse said, Christ by highest heaven adored, Christ the everlasting Lord. Late in time behold him come, offspring of a virgin's womb. 
veiled in flesh the Godhead see. Hail the incarnate deity, pleased as man with men to dwell. Jesus, our Emmanuel, hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn king. He said, Hail the heavenly born prince of peace. Hail the son of righteousness. Light and life to all he brings. Risen with healing in his wings. Mild he lays his glory by. Born that man no more may die. Born to raise the sons of earth. Born to give them second birth. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory. Glory, glory to the newborn king. That's why we can rejoice today in the fact that he has come, that he is here, that it's not just a story of yesterday, but there is such promise in the message of Christmas that he is with us presently and will be with us even to the end of the world. Lo, I am with you, he said. I am with you. Praise God. He alone is worthy of worship. He alone deserves our homage and our praise. David said it like this in Psalm 49. Who is this king of glory? Lift up your heads, all ye gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O oh, you gates. Lift up, you everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Praise God. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm glad to know that Jesus is the king, that he is the king of kings, and that he is the Lord of lords. Our final song we're going to join in, so let's stand together. It's, O come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. O come, ye to Bethlehem. He is born the king of angels. And we want to conclude this service with worship.